It's time for me to transition to the defensive side of the football for this 2013 NFL Draft by taking a look at the defensive line prospects. Now keep in mind, when it comes especially to the defensive end position, I've taken several players that I project to be more likely to be 3-4 outside linebackers at the NFL level, and I've taken them out of the defensive end rankings. So there will be some players that maybe could have been on this list that aren't because I projected them more at another position at the NFL. Uh, but when you look at this class, I, it, there is some talent here on the defensive line, and there are some guys that are definitely moving up the draft board. But just like with many other positions in this year's draft, and you're looking at positions where you have players that have some of the traits you really like, but maybe the production isn't the greatest, or they have injury concerns, or they have other concerns. You know, so it's a lot of potential, a lot of potential to become impact players, or a lot of potential to become busts. So let's take a look at the dis defensive line class. We'll start off with the defensive tackles. I definitely think this defensive tackle class this year is much more talented, both at the top and throughout than the defensive end classes. You're going to look at potentially, I would say, four defensive tackles maybe being taken in the first 20 to 25 picks. It's a good class. And you have a couple of guys that are being talked about as top 10 picks in Star Latulule and Sharif Floyd. When I look at this defensive tackle class, you know I see guys at the top that could come in and be big-time impact players. And in the case of guys like uh, especially Sylvester Williams, and in the case of Star Latulale, I think they could project just as well in a 3-4 scheme, either as a defensive end or even as potentially a nose tackle. So that, to me, in the eyes of some NFL teams, is going to increase their draft stock because of their versatility, their ability to play multiple positions, regardless of scheme, in the NFL. Now, that helps their draft stock most definitely. Now, when you look at how I graded out the defensive tackles, some of you might look and see Jonathan Hankins from Ohio State so low. I think he's going to be a guy that gets taken in the second round. He could end up slipping to the third round. There are just maybe better talents or more athletic talents at the position, and a guy like him is going to slip a little bit. As far as the top four tackles, I'm a little cautious on Sylvester Williams. I like him. I don't really, really like him as a prospect. He could be one of those guys that's a workout warrior, that teams try to outthink themselves. And when you have the top three tackles in any particular order of Latulale, Floyd, and um, Sheldon Richardson, thank you. Uh, what happens is, I've talked about this before in mock drafts, is that fourth defensive tackle gets artificially inflated in terms of his value, just like you see on the offensive tackle side, where you have Fisher, Joko, Johnson, and then DJ Fluker, as a result, his draft stock rises considerably. It's almost like a wave in a way. You hear about that from time to time in terms of draft lingo. Now, why do I have Latulale graded ahead of Floyd? I just like Latulale a little bit better. I think he has more versatility. I think he could play more positions in different schemes on the defensive line. And I think he has more impact, to, more potential to be an all-around dominator in the middle, as opposed to maybe a Sharif Floyd, who's maybe perhaps best suited to be a one-gap penetrator in a cover two type of system in a 4-3 defense. That doesn't mean that Floyd can't be a very good defensive tackle. But this is kind of similar. They're not the same players, mind you, but I'm using this as a comparison when I'm talking about like an Indomitian Sue versus a Gerald McCoy in 2010. You know, to me, Sue was the by far better player, and I thought he had more versatility and more ability to dominate on the interior, where I thought McCoy was a little more one-dimensional as a player coming out of that draft. And I kind of look at it this way. I think Tulele can be a more all-around dominant player in the middle as opposed to Floyd, who maybe is going to have to be more dominant as a pass rusher. Not saying he can't play the run at all, but rushing the passer is what's going to make him potentially a star in the NFL. I really do like Shelton Richardson. To me, he would be a perfect fit for a team like the Dallas Cowboys, somebody that's going to a 4-3, going to a cover-2 scheme. A guy like Shelton Richardson fits into that scheme beautifully. He might not end up being there, but if he would, um, that would be a great pick for the Dallas Cowboys. But this is a good defensive tackle class with four guys that I pretty much believe in my heart are going to go in the first round, maybe two of them potentially even in the top ten. And with several other defensive tackles, such as Montori Hughes and Akeem Spence, Kwan Short, Benny Logan, Jesse Williams, John Jenkins, Hankins even, 
that could be contributors and starters on NFL defenses. Obviously, this defensive end class, to me, my opinion, is not as strong as the defensive tackle class. It just isn't. And, you know, when you take a few guys that played end in college and realize that they're going to have to play 3-4 outside linebacker in the NFL, it only weakens the class a little bit. You know, a lot of these defensive end prospects, to me, have fleas. Just like you can say, again, with many of these other positions in this year's draft. But Ansa from BYU, my favorite defensive player in this entire draft. But he's a guy who's still very raw. Um, you know, he's 24 years old. He might be a top 10 pick, and I believe he is in terms of his talent and upside, but teams are going to hesitate taking a guy that's 24 who still ha has a lot of work to do. He does have some Jason Pierre-Paul type of ability. I don't know if he's quite that explosive as a football player, but he's a hell of an athlete, somebody you could also project just as well, maybe even a little bit better as a 3-4 outside linebacker. When you look at Tank Carradine, you know, he blew out his knee. He's a talent. You're going to hear his name called in the first round. Whereas maybe a couple months ago, you wouldn't have thought that was possible. But he's a great pass rush talent. But again, you wonder what's going to happen with his knee. He's got other guys too, guys that I like, like Deton Jones from UCLA, Alex Okafor um, from Texas. And you have some workout warriors. Obviously, Marcus Hunt from, from Estonia, I say, in SMU. Uh, he's 26. Somebody's going to fall in love with that size, speed, athleticism combination. He's going to go late first, early second round. Now, some of you might be wondering why the hell I have Werner from Florida State so low. Um, you know, I'm not going to say he's a bad talent, but when I watched him, he was one of those guys that after I heard all this buzz about him, I had to watch. And then I watched him again. And I watched him again. And the point that I'm getting at is, is I had to watch him several times because I didn't get what the hell the big deal was about this guy. I see a guy whose motor is suspect. I think he gives up sometimes on plays. His pass rush moves weren't all that spectacular. I don't think his quickness was all that spectacular. I don't think he was that explosive of a defensive end. I don't know if he's athletic enough to play outside linebacker in a 3-4. He could be an NFL starter as defensive end. He could be a Kyle Vandenbosch type or something like that, I suppose, which wouldn't be bad. But when I look at this class, I think there are other players at the position with more upside, and Werner just didn't really impress me. Like I said, this is a class of defensive ends. Uh, if you really needed a defensive end, especially in a 4-3, uh, you're going <laughs> to wish it was another draft where you're trying to address that need. More of the ends you'll probably see taken will be the defensive back tackles that end up being converted to 3-4 defensive ends. A good defensive line class, but the real strength of it to me is at the defensive tackle position, and you're going to see quite a number. I would say looking at my sheet, four, five, six, you know, somewhere between six to eight of these defensive linemen between tackles and ends are going to be taken in the first round. So that has to be viewed at least as a solid class. 